as as many of you already know the blah 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 As many of you already realize, mobile devices are dramatically impacting how journalists produce and consume news. This week, we're going to explore basic concepts related to mobile news content. We will cover native apps versus websites, we're going to talk about trends, and we're going to cover some of the concerns that are raised by mobile content. When I talk about the mobile web, all I'm referring to is the mobile version of a website with the same content as the computer accessed website, but pared down and appropriately sized for mobile. So it's what should open on your phone if you click a link from your Facebook or Twitter app. And for, news and for most newspapers, it's the primary source of traffic. The most common mobile platforms are Android, Macs, iOS, e-readers like the Nook, iPads and other tablets, and what we can expect to see in the future, wearables like Apple's recently launched iWatch and Samsung smartwatch, which they call the gear, and of course Go Google Glass. By the way, I highly encourage you to watch the daily show segment on Google Glass, which I posted on Beachboard. Mobile users spend most of their time using apps as opposed to web browsers. A native app is a program that's been developed for use on a particular platform or device. And native apps will always run faster than a generic web app or one that you download from the cloud. And that's because there's no translation taking place. Realizing how popular apps are, news organizations are offering them with all kinds of unique features, rather than apps that simply mimic the typical web experience. So, for example, native apps are capable of offering notifications that you predetermine based on the kinds of stories you want to hear about immediately. There's personalization, so when you open the app, it'll go straight to the kinds of content that you've identified as most interesting to you, so maybe it's international news or music. There are home screen widgets that allow you to open the app very easily with just one click. And then really significantly, Apps enable offline access, so you don't need an internet connection to read the news. News organizations would prefer that people enter their sites through an app rather than a web browser. The reality, however, is that tablets are changing how people access the news. And in fact, over the last year, more people are using their browsers rather than apps for news consumption. And that's according to a study conducted by the Pew Research Center. And what this means is that media outlets have to pay more attention to design. So in the future, all sites will be mobile responsive. And a mobile responsive website automatically changes to fit the device used to read it. So responsive design is aimed at four general screen sizes, the widescreen desktop monitor, the laptop, the tablet, and the mobile phone. So as the screen gets smaller, the content shifts and it changes to the best display for each screen. So about half of all U.S. adults now have a mobile connection to the web through either their smartphones or tablets, and this is significantly more than even just a year ago, so it's a really growing trend. About a quarter of U.S. adults own a tablet device, and about half of all U.S. adults own smartphones, and this has major implications for how news will be consumed, and we're going to talk about this more next week, but also how news is going to be paid for. For now, though, we're going to focus on news consumption, and people who get news from both their phones and their tablets tend to be more engaged news users when we compare them to people who access news from a single device. And what media organizations are facing today is a 24-hour audience. So news consumers look at websites on their computers when they get to work, in the morning, and maybe they'll look at them again at lunch. But people on their mobile phones are accessing news all day 
And if you are like some of my students and the woman in this picture, they're also looking at news all night. So what are people reading all this time? And what Pew has found is that mobile users are not just checking headlines on their devices, as I think there's sort of a preconceived notion that that's what we do. Um, but in fact, many are also reading longer news stories. So about three quarters of adults who consume news on their tablet report reading in-depth articles at least some of the time. We've spent some time this semester talking about the very tightly integrated relationship between social media and news. And Pew has found that people are more likely to send or receive news through email, through email and social networks and to read past issues of magazines, so that is to take advantage of the archive function when they are consuming news on a mobile device. This popularity of tablets has led to the emergence of two distinct audiences. So first there are newfound digital customers, and these are people who never read the news or consumed news until they had a tablet. And then we've also got the customers who are looking at news on their tablet, but at the same time they remain very loyal to the print product. And about 31% of mobile news users have print-only subscriptions, and they say that they have no plans to give them up. One interesting aspect about this is that print subscribers report that they also prefer their app-based news to be more like a traditional reading experience. So they're not really into the bells and whistles and these high-tech features that you can find on media apps. So that raises the question, why are we placing so much emphasis on developing unique apps? And there are a handful of reasons. So for one thing, native apps make it easier to share articles through email and social media. They also make it possible for news consumers to buy a product that they've seen advertised or featured. And another interesting aspect is that apps can compensate for disabilities. So a user can expand the format and they can enable audio. And then of course there are some business goals that are driving app development. So apps are believed to help build brand loyalty and they enable targeted advertisements. And they also make this thing called push notifications possible. So in case you haven't heard the term push notification, I'm gonna explain what it is. A push alert is one way for an app to send information to your phone even when that app is not running. So for instance, if you download the Long Beach Press Telegram app onto your phone and you enable push notifications, that app is going to send you the, la the latest local news whether or not that app is in use. So you say you get the push alert and it intrigues you, so you click on the message, you will be directed to the Press Telegram app. And this is a key means of driving traffic to mobile websites. However, newspapers really have to walk a tightrope because push alerts can be very annoying. As you will see in this commercial for the Breaking News app, which I posted on Beachboard. The mobile web is influencing how journalists like us present content. So editors want reporters to file stories as quickly as possible. I was talking to a local editor who told me he tells his staff to think of mobile news as developing news. Editors want reporters to notify the online team ASAP if a push alert is merited. They also want reporters to include subheads and hyperlinks and bullet points. And all of these elements are necessary because they break up a story and they keep readers interested when they're reading them on a small screen like a moon. It's also really important that content now include a lot of photos and other types of visual media. And we know from our 
own news consumption that these elements make your story more interesting and they also make them more visible when people post links on Twitter or Facebook. And keeping stories clean and concise is a very long-term philosophy for journalism, but it's even more at center stage with mobile content because readers are looking for information fast. They're not looking for information that's flowery. And finally, just a few takeaways that I want you to keep in mind. Despite the popularity of mobile news, the desktop computer remains a key element of people's news consumption, and that's probably because it's a tool during the workday. And despite all the convenience of mobile, fully 41% of mobile users told Pew that they prefer getting news on a conventional computer. And finally, the Pew survey found continued resistance to paying for content on mobile devices. And this presents a real challenge for media organizations who, by their very nature, need to generate a profit. And here is a list of news apps that offer unique and unusual features. And I'm asking you to check out at least three of these apps prior to class on Monday when we will discuss them.